Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I am Gene Morano. Our guests today include a longtime employee and well-known figure in the city of Salem, Carrie Harveycutter, now the Director of Tourism, and a much newer official in Salem, the Director of Economic Development, Tommy Miller, who comes to the Valley with a very impressive resume. And Carrie and Tommy, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Gene. Thank Good you. to be here. I've known you forever, Carrie, so. Yes, I had hair. Well, did you really? I don't <laughs> yes. remember that. But, uh, <laughs> Tommy, welcome to the Valley. I know you've been here about six months or so, and Carrie speaks very highly of you. Um, and let's start with you. You come from the, uh, you were working with the Virginia Economic Development Partnership before you came to Salem this spring. How does VDIP work, and how does it sort of fit with this job or translate to this job? Yeah, so uh, again, pleasure to be here. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Um, yeah, VEDP is the state organization that helps uh, kind of sell and market the state as a whole to nationally and globally around the world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so they really kind of start the funnel to support all the other regional and local economic development organizations across the Commonwealth. And uh, um, kind of what my role was to be out there as a project manager, uh, but also help in a lot of uh, what we call lead generation. So out there meeting directly with companies, going to different conferences and trade shows, as well as working uh, with the site consultants out there that kind of help uh, with the companies as they're looking for new locations uh, for business around, around, again, around the world. Right, so you were really competing with other, other states, other countries or whatever. Mm -hmm. How That's competitive is, is it out there uh, when you're trying to attract new business to a Salem, to a Roanoke Valley, to a, a state? How competitive is it, and, and, and do you really have to offer a lot of sweeteners in a lot of cases? Yeah, well, you know, it, the, the climate has changed. Uh, you know, a lot of things have happened over the last few years, and so there's a lot of different uh, important factors. You know, supply chain, how close you can be to your suppliers out there, workforce, the amount of talent that you have in your community. You know, there, there's a number of factors out there, real estate that's available uh, that the, a company can utilize. So you know, the, all those depend on, on each individual company and the criteria they're looking for. So no, no, no two projects are the same. Mm -hmm. So it, there's a lot of different varying factors, but it is very competitive. Yeah, now is VDEP related to Go Virginia program? The Go Virginia program? It's, it's not directly related, but they work hand in hand on, on some initiatives that will go. There's, there's a lot of other uh, far stretching uh, kind of goals and, that the organizations have, and so they do work together. Yeah. I'm wondering before I ask Carrie a question is um, during the, the height of the pandemic, when there was a lot of federal money and state money coming down from the feds, seed money, money to keep businesses alive, even to kind of help grow businesses. I'm just wondering if you, if you saw evidence that maybe if some of those programs would continue where you could throw seed money to help keep company to help companies grow that it would be beneficial in the long run yeah i think um vedp standpoint is there kind of more helping kind of uh, give direction there's a really big research team there that can help out on uh you know what areas of the regions need assistance and in what industry sectors uh, so they would be very helpful kind of in the Go Virginias that would uh, be benefactors of some of that seed money and other state organizations, mm -hmm. uh, again, kind of as a, a, a consulting arm there. Okay. Well, Carrie, you, you tipped me off to Tommy when we were at a groundbreaking yes. for Ridgeview Bank. Uh, you know, before I ask you, what does is, what is, you think Tommy brings to the, uh, the table in Salem? I think he brings a fresh outlook for Salem. He, he has great contacts. He understands the business. He understands how to, to talk to people, to get them to take that first look at Salem, uh, to view our community. Uh, and he's just a great asset as he develops his team and the, the research and the data that he needs to gather mm -hmm. uh, to make a, a difference in Salem. Mm. You know, you, uh, Salem is a s fairly small city. 14 square miles. Well, there you go. Um, what, what, and you've been so involved, Carrie, with sports, getting events here in the past. I mean, uh, uh, it's a lot easier now to explain where Salem it is. It is. Because you've had, what, you've been over 90 championships. 96. Okay. So talk about that when you, when you guys first got started and you hatched the idea, hey, we need to bring some, 
championships here. Look, when we, we went first down the path for that first Stag Bowl in 93, we just wanted a football game. We really didn't understand sports marketing, and then we had an opportunity to put a bid in for NCAA softball the next year, and that opened some eyes up that maybe this is something we can develop into a market. Uh, and sports tourism really wasn't in existence back in the, in the early 90s. Uh, it came on a little bit later. Uh, but we were ahead of the curve, uh, and we had to, had to sell Salem. Uh, now Salem with the NCAA and Division II and Division III is a known quantity. Mm -hmm. uh, they know what they're going to get. They're going to get great facilities with outstanding people to run them. And it's a lot easier to sell. It's still difficult, though, uh, in a, in a non-collegiate environment to sell Salem uh, because there's a Salem, Massachusetts, and there's Salem, Oregon. There's Salem just about everywhere. Right. So, you know, we'll say then we're part of Virginia's Blue Ridge. Well, where's Virginia's Blue Ridge? And we finally just gotten to the point. If someone to know where Salem is, we're 40 minutes from Virginia Tech. Yeah, that's a good way to put and, it. And everybody knows where Virginia Tech is for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we can place it there. But we've, you know, we're, we've got outstanding facilities with the new Moria coming online in 24. It, it's yeah, I want to ask you about that. Uh, as we go to taping, last week it was the, at the groundbreaking, you guys were too, for the uh, $27 million makeover at the Moyer Sports Complex, including a complete redo of the softball complex. I was talking to John Shaner about that. You, awnings over the seating and expanded it, dugouts. It, it's amazing. Expanded dugouts, chair for the primary game field, uh, chair back seats. The other three fields will have, have chair backs, but they'll be in aluminum as opposed to a, a fixed seat. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you said the, the shade covers, uh, new entryway, elevator for the tower, and large concession stand. But more than that, there's three pickleball courts being added, the skateboard park is being uh, upgraded, and there's going to be a wonderful, wonderful playground for the youth. And the shade covers for the parents and grandparents when they bring their kids to the park, too. Very important. By the way, do you know there's a professional pickleball league coming in? I LeBron James is an investor. LeBron's an yeah. investor. <laughs> it, it's interesting. Uh, I know people who love pickleball. Oh, yes. It's, have you ever it, played? I've yet to play it, but I want to try and, and we're talking about uh, trying to do one indoor at the Civic Center. Uh, we can put 15 courts in there. We, in fact, John Shaner you and I You like I a met, tournament? Yes. Okay. John Shaner and I met last week with uh, USA Pickleball in Savannah at a conference. Wow. You know, Tommy, when you see a city like Salem investing $27 million in uh, an upgrade for a sports complex. Does it, did it sort of give you an idea of how much the sports marketing means to the city as far as bringing people in to eat and shop and, and right. stay there and the whole thing? Right, yeah. Well, so a little more of my background is uh, I did a lot of local economic development prior to uh, the state working with uh, kind of rural and suburban communities. So coming to Salem was exciting because it's, it's a full built out environment of a city and then learning more of the culture and the history of the city. Um, you know, they, they started sports tourism, so it was, it's, it's really exciting to now live here and learn and start to absorb some of that culture. And, um, and seeing their commitment to Moyer Field is, is exciting. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to kind of learn and see how I can be of assistance to that. And, it, and it's really a part of the quality of life that adds to, to Salem and, and the region as a whole, which is also, you know, the outdoors are very impressive. The greenways that Salem has going through their community. You know, it's, it's very exciting and lighting for the, for the community and residents. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they, when they finally, which could be next year, that when they finally link the greenway from mm -hmm. Roanoke County all the way through Salem, might that be one way to get more people to, to check Salem if they, bike to the Salem right. end of it and get off and go to the brew pub or go downtown, that type of thing. Yeah, certainly. I um, hope so. Uh, you know, Salem is a you, 14 square miles. 14 square miles. What's the challenge, Tommy, of economic development in a city like that where you don't have a lot of property that's open? Um, how much of it is talking about, you know, repurposing buildings and infill and things like that? Exactly. So again, that's that was part of what attracted me to it because of this built out environment. And historically, I'm out there in the past going out there trying to market and fill um, open industrial parks. And we don't uh, have that here. We don't have that here. So, it, you know, seeing uh, adaptive reuse of, of some buildings uh, is going to be, um, you know, a major initiative. Um, we have some uh, 
large buildings, the biggest, most um, standout building is the, the GE, the former GE building. Right. And so we really want to see some new users come in into that um, space, uh, be it one big, one big user, or if there's multiple users that can fill that space. Um, and um, it's the existing businesses. That's the biggest part. I want to make sure that our existing businesses are getting the support they need, that they're continuing to grow, be successful, mm -hmm. um, and, and any type of also the small uh, startups and gazelles that are already within the community, how we can support those as well. What, what do you hear from small businesses and all that as far as any additional support they need? Or what, what, you know, what is it they're looking for from the city? Well, Besides Carrie bringing all these sports <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> Well, it can be anything from, uh, you know, financing is a big part, you know, some, tarp, some part of seed funding, uh, helping generate a uh, connection of networks as well. You know, some, some folks have a great idea, but they just don't know where to go, where to start, development of business plans. Uh, and, and so making those connections uh, that can help them be successful. And, and we know where uh, our office is aware of where those resources are and at least kind of help get them started. And then it's also on the real estate side. If they're ready to get out of mom and dad's garage and, and find a, a small warehouse or some office space or retail space, you know, we want to we don't be there and help them find that as well. Right. Now with Salem, you don't have any kind of a collab space or business incubator space, do you? Um, um, it's on the radar. It is, okay. Yeah, definitely want to definitely have, look at all those opportunities to help uh, with our small businesses and startups. Hmm. Yeah. I wanted to mention the Stag, the Stag Bowl will be coming back at least for one year. Correct? One year, 50th anniversary. Next year? 23. 23, yes. okay. And uh, how, how long was the Stag Bowl here? That's the Division Three college football championship it, game. It started here in 93 and we hosted it for 25 years. Uh, and so it, it was really interesting because we did not intend to bid for the Stag Bowl because they've just gone in a different direction of somewhere different every year. And, uh, and J.J. Nekoloff, who we both know is sure. the assistant commissioner of ODAC, is on the football committee, and he said they'd, the committee would love for us to put a bid in, and we did, and we were awarded the, the golden anniversary year, which is really exciting, because that's where we started, mm -hmm. uh, and it brings you full circle. Right. Uh, before you were a director of tourism, what was your title? Director of Civic Facilities. Okay. I had Civic Center, Football Stadium, Baseball Stadium. And you did that for a long time? Yes, sir. Okay. A long time. Well, just talk about that in the in the city of Salem. Just talk about that one complex. You've got minor league baseball there. You've got Salem football in the in the football stadium. You have all those events, concerts, or whatever. Talk about that, and, and you can both talk about what that means to the city. It it generates economic impact. It adds to the quality of life uh, because a lot of people come to Salem. That may be the only opportunity they see Salem. Uh, they come to a Red Sox game. But now we have the CIAA football championship, so it's a different group of people, right. uh, member schools coming in, playing their game and staying in our hotels, concerts in the stadium. And the biggest impact of anything in that facility is the fair, because you're looking at a quarter of a million people that come every year. Right, that's a fr it's still a free gate fair. It is still a free gate fair. It's the largest free gate fair in the country and the largest fair in the state of Virginia. Yeah, I went this year. We actually had a booth there with the radio. Yes, you did. I, uh, I could not believe it. I mean, the way you guys spread that out. and It looks like a permanent amusement park, and you it do does. it all for a couple of weeks. Yes, everything comes in. It's built on site. Ride Inspector watches them build it from the time they take it off the truck till the time the last rider leaves the closing night of the fair. He's there with us. Mm. Now, Tom, you worked in Orange County? Correct. Okay. Is that a more rural county? or? Yes. Okay. So what was it like economic development in a rural county? I guess one of the things you can pitch there is you've got open land and probably right. low cost labor, lower cost labor. Coming to, uh, jumping into a Salem, uh, is this like the next, kind of the next challenge for you, the next step? Yeah, uh, you know, again, that built out environment is just uh, really, really enticing me. It's, it's gonna have a lot new kind of different pieces to navigate and um, Orange County, it was very interesting as part of the Charlottesville MSA. So um, in economic development, you're really selling a region right. and uh, kind of getting back to where you're talking about the Civic Center, you know, that's a great regional asset of, of uh, all three of those complex all uses there, the football field, baseball stadium, and the Civic Center that really kind of support all of uh, the Roanoke region, the Valley. And uh, we want to continue to see that be a success and, and then when folks realize, oh, that's in the city of Salem, 
Yeah, that's like, oh, I, I really uh, didn't realize Salem was this large of a, a city right. and had these amenities. And so that's helpful. Orange County didn't have those amenities, obviously. It, and it's different. You promote different things. Uh, uh, James Madison's Montpelier was in Orange County. So okay. a historic site, also a good uh, tourism draw. And so you work with the, those avenues on how you can continue to make sure that's a, a good asset, what new investments they're going to make uh, that'll support that. So we want to make sure the same thing with the Civic Center, continue those uh, additional investments and that it's a success uh, down the road for the future. Right. Do you have any makeovers planned for the Civic Center itself, the building, or, or is it in pretty good shape? I, f I think they're looking at some makeovers and meeting space. Uh -huh. The arena itself is in pretty good shape, but the meeting, meeting spaces need some need some some care put to them right and you you held the division three basketball championships the men's 20, for, 20 plus years yeah right so i mean that though, that, that was on national tv yes. and all that, so pretty good exposure that was stag bowls broadcast nationally and the ciaa football championships on the aspire network national okay so hmm. um by the way you mentioned the ge property do you have some are there some is that property still in pretty good shape the bones itself of the building is it still in pretty good shape it's, it's a great building. We have uh, some really great new uh, owners. And uh, you know, there's nobody in it right now, is there? there? there well, okay, so GE does still have a, a, a significant part of R&D there. Oh, they do, uh, okay. And so we, we are happy that they're there and, and still using uh, the facility uh, for some of the high uh, spec uh, equipment that's still there. Um, and so we wanna still support that portion of the, of the uh, business uh, that's in place. Uh, but the new owners are, are, are uh, as local economic development, you often have folks that will purchase buildings and sometimes it just becomes local warehouse and it doesn't have a great reuse of great right. jobs and, and, and investment of equipment. And so we, right now, uh, Phoenix Investors uh, is, are the new owners of the GE building and they're doing a lot of uh, upfit and modernization of the, of the building. And so we're excited to see that. And it's one of the largest buildings available in the state. So. We are getting lots of looks uh, and we want to see and have lots of more looks and, and uh, hopefully we'll have some good fits there mm -hmm. down the road. Again, be it one big user or multiple users. Right. So what was it like being in the economic development business during the height of the pandemic? Well, you'd, you'd asked about kind of money that filtered down. Right. One of the things I think was most proud of was when you're at the state level, there was really a lot of support there trying to work with uh, the, the governor's office at the time. Uh, other leadership, uh, where the, the uh, what is it, the PP equipment, uh, we, we were out there really trying to help uh, the businesses, the community, the hospitals. To find the and, PPE. And, and find the PPE, since yeah. we were the ones that had kind of the most uh, uh, connectivity of, of what companies were out there. That was a, that was a long uh, kind of work, a lot of work that we were doing, engagement there, kind of a pause on, on economic development work and helping the community. Yeah, um, and it did seem like there was a lot of money flowing, flowing down from the feds through the state and all that. And it seemed like I know lots of businesses. That's what kept them kind yeah. of alive. So and a lot of that went to the local community economic development office. So I know they were they the local economic development offices were working hard at that time because they're the ones that also know their businesses best and and what companies would need uh, those resources the most and where to kind of spread those funds. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about uh, Main Street. Where does Main Street Salem fit into the economic development picture and the, the you know, the, the livelihood of, of the city of Salem? There's been some redevelopment there, repurposing uh, yeah. buildings in the brew pubs and restaurants and even a hotel. Yeah. What do you see as the potential, maybe even further potential for downtown Salem? Well, I mean, downtown right now is in the middle of uh, the renovation that's going place on, on streetscapes and, and lighting and um, the VDOT funding, and Carrie may be able to speak a little bit more of it uh, as well, but um, you know that was an eye-opening for me to come in. I'd driven through Salem many of years ago and then come and see kind of all this new investment that's been taking place and just, just kind of the, the vibe and energy that's starting to, to come into downtown uh, is exciting. Uh, again, there have been some losses uh, since the COVID era of some, some retail and right. restaurant establishments, but you know, that's where I really hope to see, uh, again, where we can bring back some more of the, those new retailers and, and restaurant options. Uh, but the, the breweries in the area, um, uh, Roanoke College right next door, uh, you know, so, some of the other things that are taking place, you know, I just see a lot more momentum 
where uh, downtown Salem is going to be uh, continuing to see some good improvements and, and uh, a lot more energy and, and pedestrians on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Next next block starts pretty soon, the block from Market Street to Broad Street on both sides. Mm -hmm. That's the area in front of the downtown motor lofts and Charlotte's Web Antiques and all that. Right. Uh, they'll start the streetscaping and the brick paver sidewalks okay. and new lighting and everything with the overhead lights and stuff like that. that that's going to start this fall. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine when a lot of these people come in for events at the Selma Civic Center Complex or the Boyer that a lot of them make their way downtown at some they point. They do, and, and we've tried in the last five or six years when we really had a defined tourism office to start you know, suggesting restaurants. Uh, now we have the one, one boutique hotel, hotel downtown with the second one, the Roland, should open here in the next month above Frankie Roland's restaurant. Okay. So we have more places uh, for people to stay and then shop downtown, go to the antique stores and things of that yeah. nature. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that with the boutique hotels, it would be ideal for someone coming in to do something at Roanoke College. They're ideal. They're ideal for people coming to NCA soccer. Uh, we're going to lodge some people at the lofts that can park their car and walk back and forth to the pitch. And so they're right there. Where's the That's NCAA the soccer going to happen? Uh, Ronald College, the first weekend in December, Division okay. Three men and women. For the national championship? Yes, sir. Okay. Right on the, uh, on the, on the pitch at the... On Kerr Field, yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah, we have that for three years. The next four-year cycle that we just began with the NCAA, we have men's and women's soccer, women's lacrosse, soft, two years of softball, a year of men's volleyball, a year of women's volleyball, two years of softball, uh, and two years of uh, women's basketball well, they're never and gonna, the stag ball. They're never going to let you retire, huh? Well, it's still fun. Yeah. When you hear all this coming, uh, you, you kind of say, ka-ching, Tommy, in your mind, that you know, this is an oh, opportunity yeah. to put your best face forward for Salem. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, again, I'm, I'm learning more and more, and uh, what Carrie and John have been able to do in the city and, and keep this relationship with NCAA is really impressive, and, and we just need to kind of learn and figure out ways to even leverage it further, and, mm -hmm. and what we need to do uh, so when we have more of these uh, folks coming in that they, they have leave with a, a, you know, a good feeling of Salem and perhaps coming back uh, if it's not related to a sports, mm -hmm. sporting event. We just have a couple of minutes left. I wanted to ask you something I read in your background about high tech. Is it something you're interested in, in getting high tech businesses in the town? Or? Oh, certainly, certainly. I mean, right now, a, another thing that I'm really excited about Salem is it has a, an amazing manufacturing uh, base. And, and you can say that's great. We have a, a lot of manufacturers, but the diversification within those manufacturers is really impressive as well. Uh, we, have, we have life science companies of, of Novozymes, right. uh, manufacturing biological, uh, um, uh, I can't even get into the science. Enzymes or something, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um, we have high-tech um, uh, medical equipment manufacturers, um, transportation equipment manufacturers. Uh, it, it's really diversified within the various industry sectors that are there. Um, but further diversifying on the manufacturing sector, high tech is certainly one we want to go at. And as a built out environment, if there's a additional unique, uh, with the boutique hotel space, uh, you mentioned collab space, if there's unique kind of office uh, technology space that we can have out there uh, to further diversify our, our, our industry makeup, we certainly want to look at that mm -hmm. as well and, and, and support further regional growth uh, within Salem. Right, and speaking of regional, since, you know, the Roanoke Valley's got Roanoke County, Roanoke City, Salem, Botetourt. If you look at the outside, uh, how much of a regional? When does the regional approach make sense for Salem to get involved with the Roanoke Regional Partnership? John Hull, people there. When does that make sense? All the, all the time, all the time. Always makes sense. We want to work with them um, through every every facet of economic development, and when we're working with a, a end customer, uh, when we can have that point to sell Salem and and find that a, a building or lo location makes sense for them and you know, we're going to put our best foot forward and if it doesn't come to Salem if it comes to the city or an, one of the other city of Roanoke or some of the other counties it's, it's a benefit for everybody so you know, and they, they might know they may wind up living or eating in Salem that's, or something. that's exactly right yeah. right uh, Carrie just I uh, just to, I wanted to wrap up with you um, when you when you look back uh, of all the things that you've worked on what are the what gives you the most satisfaction? Things that you worked on with John Shaner and everybody as far as really bringing to the city? Well, the first Stag Bowl was, has to be a highlight. 
Uh, but John Shane and I go after everything. You know, we don't just look at events that we, can, we know we can do. Uh, we don't get too far out from things that we can't sell and, and do well. Uh, ACC baseball for two years was great to have. Yeah, I remember uh, that. It was yeah, fun. and we had that. They, they needed a place to go, and I made friends with the conference uh, that are still there to this day. Uh, and so though that, that kind of event. But the fair, because it's, you know, it's 35 years old, uh, and it's grown every year. Uh, really a regional track. It, it is very much a regional track. And this year we had some state tourism dollars that we marketed for people to come stay in our hotels and eat our restaurants, come to the fair. Uh, and that worked well. Uh, but now we're transitioning uh, to the outdoors with the mountain biking. And, you know, you mountain bike in Carvin's Cove, but sleep, eat, and drink in Salem because we're so close. And so right. those kind of things. So All right, we're going to have to leave it there. And uh, you, I mean, just a couple seconds, you, you like mountain biking, so that's kind of <laughs> close to your heart, huh? I love the outdoors. That's true. Right. Yes. Come out to Carbons Cove and then go to Parkway Brewing. And, that's right. And I know you got involved with the beer tours in Richmond, correct? Yeah. When you're asking about my background, it's at high tech. I said, well, I had a beer business. And yeah, no, no. I was just tech, at but. Track <laughs> yeah. right. Hey, we're going to have to leave it there. Carrie Harvicutter, always great to see you. Yes. Tommy Miller, both with the city of Salem. Tommy, great to meet you. And uh, Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining Good us. Good to see you again. Thank you. I'm Gene Morano. This has been Business Matters. Thanks for joining us.